Hi, this is Matt Amberson, the principal of ORATS, and today I'd like to go over the dashboard, some of the main features of it. So firstly, you'll see a graph of volatility, uh, you, and you're able to set the days where, of the statistical volatility. You could also look at volatility with earnings in or earnings out. This is a special feature and it happens very quickly here. For example, we've set to look at volatility 20, 100, and 250 days the uh, with earnings in and earnings out. This is IBM. So over the last 250 days, IBM has moved at a 17.84 with earnings out and a 19.41 with earnings in. Uh, we could view implied volatility at the interpolated 30, 60, or 90 day. Uh, we could include or not include earnings lines and you could see what happens to volatility around earnings. It's very important. ORETS has a special method of calculating historical volatility using tick volatility and converting that into uh, a profit and a, a volatility. And when compared with close to close, uh, you, see, you could see some interesting relationships. The historical volatility for the last 20 days at close to close is 28.68. And with ORAT's tick volatility, it's 32. So there's quite a big difference there. Uh, and we found in back testing that, that that's an important uh, profitable difference to know. So that's the graph and the blue lines, the stock. Uh, we also have some relationship information here. Uh, f for example, June with 26 days out is a 27 vol. And July with 54 days out is a 28 vol buying July and selling June would have to enjoy a 30 and a half volatility, 30.54 in order for that to make that relationship uh, equal to the volatility relationship there. So we'll see, we see that there's a skew where the front months are lower than, than the back months generally except for here in Jan. And when that's the case, the relationship of, of volatility, what we call the forward volatility relationship, will be above the volatility. Whereas in Jan of 12, uh, we see that Jan of 11 is higher and then the forward volatility relationship will be lower. There's also a flat vol relationship. The flat vol relationship is the volatility at which if you put a flat volatility makes the time spread equal. And that's a longer discussion that we have in a different video, but um, that's an interesting way to look at volatility relationships as well. Also in the dashboard, are on the right-hand side over here, are dividends. And um, IBM's next dividend of $0.65 cents occurs August 6th. And then we have three different methods for communicating dividends. One is a flat file with uh, or a, a flat uh, skew I guess you call it uh, with 65 cents going out and the second is the historical trend uh, with 65 65 76 76 and then 84 and then also a market implied trend of dividends 65 up to 65.9 71.1 um, these three dividend files for all stocks can be uh, imported and downloaded into your systems. Um, another thing that we have in the dashboard are the relationships of our ORATS forecasts. Um, the, the underlying forecast of, 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 that ORATS projects is 36.61 over the ne next 20 days. Uh, we have 56 R squared of those going back four years and we have an infinite forecast or asymptote that the volatility will approach in the leaps of 22.07, which is much lower than what's in the market right now. So when you put this skew of the ORATS forecast, it goes from 36 and approaches uh, 22 in the infinite, but only gets down to 26 in uh, Jan of 12. Um, we also have a uh, earnings table at the bottom here. The next earnings in IBM is 719. Um, earn move versus fair vol. We think it'll move 236% of what it normally does. 
Historically, it's moved only 8% more back in April, 171% of normal in January, and you could see the other historic uh, performances. Also, we have how many percent the stock has moved. In April, it moved 2% up the day of and 1% down the day after. Uh, not a very big move. Uh, the straddle at that point was a 6% of value or the price of $7.17.5 divided by a, the, where the stock price was at that time was 6% and it only moved at 2 and 1% on that day. Uh, in January it moved at 2% up and down 2%. So if you average all of th these uh, absolute values you get the move of 3% up the day before and 4% down the day after and the average spread percentage of 5%. Now this is interesting because then we could go up and say okay where do we think volatility is going to fall to? Right now we have a interpolated 90 day which is somewhere around 29 here that we think it might fall to and if the earning move is we'll put 5% in there then that that uh, projects uh, a volatility of the next uh, the next month that has that volatility, which is October, since it's after July expiration of 29.87, and we highlight it in green since it's above the October implied of 29.3. And you can manipulate both of these numbers if you think it's going to fall to maybe 27 after earnings, then that only yields, with a 5% move, only yields 27.95. So we have seen the, the, the major, the major uh, criteria from the dashboard, the uh, volatility graphs and the volatility relationships, and we've also seen the dividends and the earnings table and then how to use the earnings table with the fair vol calculator. If you have any questions on any of this, please contact me, matt at orats.com, and thanks for your time.